Alrighty, welcome to another team draft. We got a four on four today. We're back in Alpha Frog's cube. We've got Rolling Earthquake, Turok Dread Cantor, and we also have a terrible pack. You know, it's uh, it's my, it, it, I've gotten used to it by now. It's okay. I, I get to draft Legacy Cube every. <laughs> In any case, uh, complaints aside, well, why would you put complaints aside, they ask? You have so many of them. Anyways, uh, I've got a sneak attack and a snapcaster here. I like snapcaster more than spellseeker to start with because the, the range of cards that I like with spellseeker is a lot narrower than the snapcaster. I don't want a spellseeker for preordain or thoughtseize, but those are great with snapcaster. That being said, I think pick one and sneak is pretty good. If you pick one sneak and you see big creatures, then you get to get some good stuff going. Pick two here is a little less exciting. Oh, one of the advantages of going back to the frog cube, the good art. We got the good arts here. Um, I'm probably going to take Xander's Lounge. I think, well, Phrenic Search is also really good. Those are both pretty good with Sneak. Basalt Monolith's not terrible with Sneak. And then the best card in the pack is probably either Frantic Search or Skyclave. Those are both pretty good. Actually, maybe I'll just take Frantic Search because Sneak and Reanimate overlap a lot. And Frantic Search is great in Reanimate too. By the way, I'm getting passed to by Mati, uh, passing to Karate Dom. My team is myself, Dan the Man, uh, Pete Ingram, and Talisker battling against also Juju Bean and Tom Martel. Some very skilled cubers. Well... I will take Frantic Search, and a pro maybe if I get back Lava Claw, I'll be happy, or Bitter Reunion. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, there's a chance I, I get one of those back. We'll see, we'll see. Oh, there's an Atroxa. That's exactly the card I was hoping for. Slamming Atroxa. Ooh, a new addition. Monster Manual. I remember this. Three mana sorcery, you mill five, and then you get a creature into your hand. And it's a four mana artifact that you can pay two and tap, put a creature into, into play from your hand. Pretty good with Atroxa, actually, but slamming Atroxa. There's also Altar of Ball, balling out of control. This is the new Alpha Frog Cube has a bunch of updates, which I actually never didn't read, so I'm going to find out during the draft here. I love that Dryad of Elysian Grove is back, by the way. So this is a weird recurring nightmare sort of deal, but you have to exile a creature to, to bring it back, but it also comes with a 4-1, so it starts out with something decent. But yeah, we're slamming Atroxa over Skull Clamp and Seasoned Pyromancer and being very happy about it, like... Starting with Atroxa, I mean, I think you all know, if you've watched really any of my videos, like I talk about Atroxa a lot. If you start with an early Atroxa, you, there's just so many ways you can go. Also, there's a chance Monster Manual wheels out of this pack. We'll see. It would depend on whether people want Cauldron or not. All right, there's Ulamog, the Infinite Gyro. Blossoming Tortoise, the 4-mana 3-3, another lands card, which is cool. I love the lands deck. When ETBs or attacks, mill three cards, then put a land into play, tapped, from your graveyard. Cost one less to activate your lands and your land creatures get plus one, plus one. Pretty cool. A, a six Solemn Simulacrum. I'm going to take Ulamog. It goes nicely with Sneak. And Frantic Search, Ulamog is actually one of the better discard outlets because it's free. So if you have Shallow Grave or Corpse Dance, you can go Frantic Search, discard Ulamog, untap three lands, and then cast Shallow Grave or Corpse Dance before the shuffle effect happens. So... If the bayou there or the stomping ground was like a volcanic island, I might actually take it. I probably would have taken it just because a volcanic island is worth a lot and Ulamog sometimes wheels, but I don't need bayou that badly. I've, you know, not those colors at all. So, all right, well, I'm going to be the, some of those colors because Shallow Grave with Frantic Search with either of these things, game. Kinan to go with the Basalt Monolith that I passed. There's a Thunder Maw. Also Chariot, Winter Orb, and Elvish Mystic are all just generically strong cards, but happy enough to take a Shallow Grave here. And this is a good start to a classic Grixis Sneak Reanimator deck. I like the Frantic Search over Xander's Lounge still. It is sad, though, because Xander's Lounge would be the perfect land for this deck. We'll see what else we pick up here. Ooh, the person passing to us has four packs, so we're about to get a a flood of packs in a second here. I mean, getting a third pick Atroxa is a pretty big game. Fourth pick Ulamog, like fifth pick Shallow Grave. It does feel this strategy is not being particularly contested. Oh yes, I love, we, we had talked about adding this. I'm glad it's in. Up the Beanstalk. Not for this deck, but for the green ramp decks, this looks pretty sweet, or sometimes the control decks. I just look forward to the day when I go up the Beanstalk, force the will your spell. All right, well, I'm gonna take War of Spine Worm here. This works just like Eldrazi with um, Sneak 
or Shallow Grave if you can cast it in response to the trigger because it does trigger. And if I get Flash, now I have two great Flash creatures, including the best Flash creature. Voldar and Thrillseeker is also a cool new addition. I actually would play it in this deck. Imagine you sneak in Ulamog attack and then sneak in this and throw Ulamog at them. If you're sneaking Ulamog, you usually don't need that much help, but well, whatever, we'll take World Spine Worm. And, hmm. The best card in the pack is Path. I'm not really in a position to take that, or like Utopia Sprawl. I might just take Ledger Shredder. It's a discard outlet and an early play, which is not the worst. Mm, yeah, I don't really like passing Path here. We already passed Thalia. You know what, I'm just going to take the Path. Maybe I don't play it, but I don't think Ledger Shredder is that good. I've actually been cutting it a lot for my decks, so I think that uh, passing a Path to Exile here would be a bigger mistake, especially since there's a bunch of good green cards in the pack anyway. Oh, so there's Inferno Titan, which works with all these, but I have three big things. I kind of just want Mindstone. Mindstone ramps you to sneak. You can cash it in for a card later. I do like Sakura Tribe Elder a lot, but I'd rather just take a colorless card here. I don't really want to be green, and I don't feel like I need Inferno Titan that badly. Red, green, land, and Golos pretty far behind. These cards are all fine. Green is very open, so we'll see. Maybe we're passing enough green that uh, Dom has gone into green. And if that's the case, then maybe hating the path wasn't as effective. But there was multiple green cards in the pack, so I couldn't hate that. Oh, Zeator's Proving Ground? I do like that. A red-black land works, and this also has extra fetch potential because it's a green land, so like a Windswept Heath can go get it. Passing the two white cards, that's fine. I am passing up on Rolling Earthquake, which is a pretty good card. Every creature in the cube doesn't have horsemanship, so this just hits every creature and near every player for red X. But I think I'm just going to take the land. When you're playing a three-color deck, having at least one land... Well, <laughs> hopefully more than that. Having some amount of lands is necessary or you just can't play the deck. All right, Lava Claw did wheel. I'm happy about that. Portal of Phyrexia would be cool if I ended up in a Tinker deck, but we're not, we're not doing that, really. I wouldn't mind if Monster Manual wheeled. I guess... I don't think that was a reason to take Sakura Tribe Elder over Mind Stone, but that Zeator's Proving Ground could potentially get get us to uh, Monster Manual territory. There's also an Arbor Elf in that pack, but I'm not really that into Arbor Elf. Oh, wow, Matt, he's got six packs. Can you get the full eight? No, I guess not. Uh, white Green Land, no. Cabal Ritual, no. Hmm. I could take Dryad here. Agatha's Soul Cauldron is kind of interesting with Gristlebrand. Give a creature the activated ability, but it doesn't work with any of the creatures I have here. And I don't really care about Coglo. Let's just take Dryad. I don't know. if th There are configurations of this deck where Dryad maybe makes it in. I guess I'm kind of into Blossoming Tortoise then. It's a, it's also a mill card. Huh. All right. I don't know. I don't really care about Enlightened Tutor or Passing Tithe Taker. Those are both whatever. And Horizon Canopy is not a card I'm looking very likely to play. I don't think it's that likely I play these green cards, but... I guess you never know. Wow, that's a late Elvish Mystic. Should I just take the Elvish Mystic? I really... I haven't seen a single blue card. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll just take Elvish Mystic now, and may, maybe we'll maybe we'll do this. We'll switch into green kind of late, but I think that's okay. Oh, I think I would rather have the Voldar and Thrill Seeker. It actually does seem kind of legit. This card actually seems pretty decent, too. It's just... It's like three mana, three, three that can fling itself. Like, I don't know. Not terrible. All right, over camera. I like the nifty new pack opening, by the way. It's very cool. Mm, I don't like the fact that I keep opening really bad packs, though. Can we can we file a support ticket on that? Well, if I end up like Jund, I have the lands for it, and maybe I don't play the frantic search. There's Taiga here. There's Preordain, but I, the only blue card I have is the sec the frantic search. I like second picked. <laughs> There's Grim Monolith, which. It's kind of looking like the card I should take. It's really good with Sneak. And I don't know. It can help you make big mana plays. I might wheel Taiga, though I'm not really that likely to. There's also a red-green uh, Talisman. All right. I'm just going to take the Grim Monolith. Here, there's Wooded Foothills, which would certainly help. There's also Thought Seas, which is great. There's Ignoble Hierarch and Fertile Ground, but I w if I wheel one of those, great. 
I don't, I'm not even that committed to green. I mean, these next couple picks will determine this, but I, I kind of feel like I should just take Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize is an amazing card. I like Wooded Foothills, but Thoughtseize can also set up your own combo. You just Thoughtseize yourself, which is pretty big. And here we've got a bunch of Talismans, a Miscalculation, a Lorien Revealed, but also Dismember and Living Death. Living Death can be kind of cute, though it's not very good with Ulamog or World Spine Worm. I guess I'll take Dismember. Yeah. Not, not loving how this is going. I mean, we'll see. Also, there are some blue cards that could pull me back in. Like, if I if I got Flash, for example, I, I would certainly take it and play it. But right now, I guess I'm like red, black. I have a couple green cards, but like they're just kind of medium. It's not like I think Dryad or Blossoming Tortoise are that great in this deck, and maybe Elvish Mystic can be. We'll see. Okay, so there's Archfiend of the Dross is a cool... Oh, I love it. This is the one I pushed to add. Coveted Jewel. Six mana, taps for three of any color, and ETBs and draw three. But whenever your opponent hits you with a creature, they, they, they draw three cards and get control of this. It's really cool. You fight over it. There's also a Snuff out here, but I think I'm just going to take Oath of Druids. Now I actually will be green, and maybe I just won't play those green cards. Something like that. Oath is just, I found to be really strong in this kind of deck. And I think I like it more than Snuff Out. And look, now we can just take Overgrown Tomb. It's also Chandra, but this isn't even that much of a Chandra deck. Let's just take the Overgrown Tomb. And maybe we play Voldar and Thrillseeker, maybe not. Huh, Time Spiral is also great. Though so is Palantir in this kind of deck. They can they just always let you draw the cards. I feel like blue is so not open in pack one. And taking a second blue card here is just not going to lead me towards playing it. I think I'd rather just take Palantir. Just a really good colorless card instead. Okay, I do like red and six in general. And if I'm red, green, black... I don't have any fetches yet, or and I bid pass a wasteland that's not coming back, unfortunately. But I also don't really think I want to play Nissa, and I don't care about Arc Trail too much. Let's just take the Renin Six. We could be Jun Sneak Reanimate is a totally legit deck, and we have a red black, a black green, and a red green black land, which also helps. So we'll see. Also, Renin Six can be good if I end up with a bunch of discard. Like Faithless Looting type cards. Oath actually mills me, though if you're Oathing, usually you're in okay shape. All right, now I just want Liliana. Liliana works well with all of these strategies. <laughs> good with Red and Six, good with Reanimates. I'm basically looking like I'm going to be Red, Black, Splash, Oath of Druids, maybe Splash, Red and Six. I like that. I don't mind that at all. And if the mana works out, maybe the Frantic Search sneaks back in, but I'm not uh, holding my breath on that one. Since Xander's Land is already gone... I mean, there's a lot of Triomes and Duels, so you, you never know, but let's see if I can get a Taiga back. I'd be pretty happy if I if Taiga wheeled. I would also take Red Green Talisman. I wouldn't I wouldn't hate that. Okay, Taiga did wheel. Virtue of Persistence is also pretty nice. I do have Dismember already and Liliana. I think just taking a land is gonna be better. And I think the land is better than the talisman. Cause now I have basically all the configurations of duels plus a tri land so it helps to be able to cast early ren and six early liliana you know just not be mana screwed on these these things and if you discount these cards on the bottom uh we're at yeah we're we're, we're actually doing pretty well in terms of playables i think so we'll see we'll see how this goes but what am I missing? I have three big creatures. I would love a Through the Breach. I'd love another Animate, and I'd love more Discard. Basically, more more of the kind of main strategy cards of this deck would be nice. Oh, Fertile Ground Wield, and oh, there's also Crucible. If I have Cru if I take Crucible, I've done this before. You take Crucible and Red and Six and hope to open Strip Mine. There's also Battle Ball, but I'm not super stoked on that. I don't really like Lightning Greaves here. I think I will take Fertile Ground. It actually seems like this deck can use it pretty nicely. Yeah, now I'm just going to be three colors. I think I take Pulse, and I'll just be kind of Jund removal with uh, these things. Living Death can be good, but I don't like it. I like it in the Reanimator deck that has a lot more creatures. All right, these green creatures are going to the side. I'm not playing those, not playing Thrill Seeker. Still a chance I play Path or Frantic Search, but 
all my lands are just Jun lands, so it doesn't look like I'm even splashing other colors at this point in time. Let's see how <laughs> Madi still has all the packs. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes you gotta ponder your cube kick picks well. I even have some nice acceleration. Fertile Ground, Grim Monolith, and Mindstone are decent. Thoughtseize and Dismember are good early interactive cards. Palantir works really nicely in this strategy. Because this is kind of like Jund Control now that I have like Thoughtseize, Dismember, Liliana, Maelstrom Pulse are all like nice removal based cards with Palantir to draw cards. And then has Oath Sneak and Oath and Sneak to, to kind of cheat some big things into play. Don't think I have an Archfiend to the Tross. I think Pylon is fine. I'm not going to be able to convoke it all that much because I don't have any creatures in my deck, really. But getting to kill a creature or Planeswalker and Surveil, too, is actually a way to get a creature into the graveyard if you care about that. Lingering Souls is kind of cute. I'm just going to take Lingering Souls because it's the best card, or maybe... Maybe I just take Graveyard Trespasser because I don't want to play against it. I don't care about... Yeah, I'll do that. I don't really care about the the bargain here. And, oh, I will play Escape, though. Escape is actually just like a nice pickup. All right, Mystic Forge, get out of here. All right, can I get one good pack? Is that too much to ask? Oh, wait. <laughs> Money has six packs. <laughs> We're going to be a little bit here. Uh, luckily, the packs don't have very many cards in them, so it won't it won't take too long to, to get through these. What would be the best card I could open in this spot? Black Lotus. I mean, sometimes the Soul Ring is better in this style of deck, but when I kind of feel like when you're the Reanimator decks can use Lotus, though maybe Soul Ring would even be better. I guess it's better with Escape, and it's really good with Palantir, Sneak Attack, all that. But right now, if you discount those two cards, we're at 21, like the, the white and blue card on the bottom, we're at 21. So that brings us to 23 lands, which means we need six playables out of this pack. That I'm not worried about hitting playables. It's more like, can I get some good ones? Not really. I mean, a Vampire Tutor is good. I'm going to take Vamp because Vamp is such a good combo with Oath. That's the classic. Turn one Vamp, turn two Oath. Obviously, it assembles both sides of the sneak combo. The next best card for me would probably be like... I don't even know, Duretti Currency Converter. Mm. Let's just take Vamp. Gonna be tough in general when your first picks are Sneak Attack, Vampiric Tutor, and uh, Grim Monolith. Those are just not very low power level first picks. That said, Sneak's really good in this deck. I think I could use one more big creature. I would not mind that. An animate spell is interesting because I don't actually have a lot of ways to get a creature into the graveyard. Right now, I just have Liliana and I guess the Surveil on Pylon. So I'm not I'm not really an animate deck. I'm a sneak oath deck more than that. Though I, I do want to play this Shallow Grave, so it would be nice to pick up like a Faithless Looting. Like that would be that would be pretty good. I guess the Currency Converter is kind of that. Uh, what a shame. There's an Tolarian Academy, there's also an Atali, and a Through the Breach, and an Undermountain Adventure, and a Shieldred. What's it like to open these packs? And an Oko? All right, well, what do I take here? There's a lot of good cards. Sadly, can't take Academy, and, I, and I'm not going to take Oko. I think I'm not going to take Through the Breach and hope it wheels, because this pack is really strong. There's one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, plus top and Ketria Trom. Nine other cards I could easily see people taking. Maybe even Dream Halls. So do I take Itali? Because it's another really good creature to cheat into play. Do I take Shieldred? Because it's just a great card to cast. Or I'll take Undermount Adventure. Also a great card to cast. I kind of think I just take Undermount Adventure. With Grim Monolith... And Mindstone to accelerate it out. And Fertile Ground, too. It can be really strong. It's also, if I pass both Atali and Breach, I think that's okay. And I don't love passing Shieldred, but I think that's what I'm supposed to do. All right, I guess I'll just take Badlands now. What way worse pack than the last one? All right, well, that decision was easy enough, I guess. Yeah, Undermount Adventure versus Shieldred. They're both castable. I feel like this deck has no draw seven, so it's not like Shieldred's just going to kill them. 
I don't mind oathing up under Mountain Adventure. And yeah, I think as much as I would want a through the breach, I kind of feel like I can try to wheel it. That pack was just so nuts. I also don't really want to pass an under Mountain Adventure in the direction where I passed a ton of green in pack one. So yeah, seems fine to me. Oh, and pack two, I got a, not a super late, but a somewhat late thought seize, which kind of indicates to me that, uh, that black isn't being drafted from that direction. All right, this pack is pretty bad for me. There's a brain freeze that I can't take, or at least if I took, I wouldn't play. Survival doesn't do anything for me. I don't think I can take Voldar and Epic here because it messes up Oath. It's just not worth it. Same with Oracle. Undermine Adventure is powerful enough. Oracle, not so much. I might just take Inquisition. I could also take Breeding Pool, and then I have Breeding Pool plus Fertile Ground to cast Frantic Search because Frantic Search would be nice in this deck, but I think I just take Inquisition and keep the Jund life going. Well, there's a Corpse Dance, but I just don't have a way to get a creature in the graveyard. Oh, Charming Scoundrel gets a creature in the graveyard. Uh, Mosswood Dread Knight messes up Oath. I could take Natural Order because I have a Troxa and World Spine Worm to get. And if I did that, I would have to put back in Elvish Mystic and like Dryad and Elvish Reclaimer. I just don't think I have enough creatures for that. I think I'm going to take it anyway, though, because I don't want to really want to pass it. And maybe we end up on it. I don't know. Ashen Rider is nice, but I'm just going to take Sylvan, I think. Oh, I do like Grief as well, but Grief without the Reanimates is a lot worse. Let's just take Sylvan. This is a very good Sylvan deck. All right. Not loving how this pack's going. We had the one pack that had all the, all the great cards. Not even just for us, just for everyone. It was just a really strong pack. But then I had a bunch of packs that have strong cards that I'm not really well poised to take advantage of, and I don't love that. Yeah. I mean, this is 19 land. Yeah, we're going to have enough playables. Like, that's not really the, <laughs> the issue. It would be nice to be able to cast a Troxa, but I can't even with Fertile Ground. What a shame. Also, Renin 6 is not looking ideal here. Cosmic Rebirth. Oh, yeah, I've seen this card. Um, Puts a permanent into play, and you gain 3 life for 3 mana, or it returns it to your hand if it costs more than 3. I guess I could take Underground C... We're just not a recurring nightmare deck at all. Underground C could maybe get Frantic Search in or get close to it. All right. Oh, there's Emrakul. I guess I just take Emrakul and just really hope the Breach wheels. Emrakul is just the best sneak card, and I'll pass up an Imperial Seal for that, I think. Look, I have Sneak and Vamp and Oath. I've got a bunch of redundancy here. Not as much as I would like, maybe, but... Okay, if we can get a 10th pick through the breach, I think that's pretty realistic, especially if Emrakul, every single person at the table passed on Emrakul. So the one thing is this is a team draft, and it's really possible that my opponent is not going to want to pass me and Emrakul then can pass me a breach two picks later. I'm going to take Doretti here because it's good with uh, Oath, whereas like taking Triskelion or Custodial Leech is not quite as good with Oath. All right. I think Doretti's pretty good. All right, now we're at 17 land, 23 spells. Perfection. All right, you can pass me the Breach. You don't need to take it. It's totally fine. <laughs> if Itali comes back and Breach doesn't, I'll be kind of kind of annoyed. All right, this is a big pick. The, getting a Breach would make this deck quite a bit better. Both Itali and Breach came back, but yeah, we're taking Breach. All right, now I'm actually feeling good about the deck. Uh, you know, passing up on Itali and Chandra, but whatever. So the question now is, do I play Shallow Grave? I, I, I can just cut Renin 6. I kind of think I do. I've got Liliana. I've got Palantir, because if you Palantir, Mill, and Atroxa, you can Shallow Grave it. I guess you can't Shallow Grave any of the rest, because <laughs> they all, uh, on your end step, is not a good time to Shallow Grave any of those. I also have Pylon, potentially. Um, I guess I'll just hate the Garrick. Pylon can also mill something. All right. And then I'm going to play the Underground C and maybe and not play the Frantic Search, probably. Uh, I'll take Urtex. I think it's the best card here. Uh, the reason to play Underground C is if I draw Fertile Ground and Underground C, I can cast Atroxa. So it's not nothing. Oh, I could take Titan. Would I play a Titan? Do I want a fourth creature? 
I kind of don't. I'm just going to hate Ravages. I think that's better. Oh, Ashen Rider is a lot better, though. I like Ashen Rider. Okay. So if we Ashen Rider, we got to cut a card. All right, well, let's see if... Uh, eh, maybe I do, maybe I don't. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. All right. So this is... Jund Breach. Okay. So, taking a look at this deck, what do we got? I mean, we just need to cut one card, I think. Because I don't, I'll play 17 land, I don't want to play 16. Um, is it possible that I just cut Ulamog then? Because I think I like Ashen Rider a little bit more. Breach or Sneaking Ashen Rider is better. Shallow Graving Ulamog is better because it exiles, so at the end of turn, Ashen Rider doesn't get a second trigger. I'm definitely not cutting Atroxa, Emrakul, or World Spine Worm. The other question is when I Oath, I've got these six creatures. Escape to the Wilds is also a potentially cuttable card, but because it does, one of the things that's awkward with escape is if you exile one of the big creatures, you can't breach or sneak it. Oh man, I would have loved just one discard outlet. Is it possible that Frantic Search is worth splashing? But the problem is I only have one reanimation card, so I don't think that that's yeah. We're not we're not going to do that. All right. Well, I kind of feel like cutting a creature is the best. Like, I don't really know. Is it Ashen Rider or Ulamog? I'd rather Oath up Ashen Rider because killing their biggest permanent right away is better. And I think I'd rather sneak and breach Ashen Rider. Killing two permanents of your choice versus four permanents. You attack for more with Ulamog too. But Shallow Graving is better. But that's the least good of them. So let's take the Ulamog. Oh, another reason. Ashen Rider with Palantir fuels Shallow Grave. Ashen Rider Ulamog doesn't. It reshuffles. All right. This looks good enough to me. I mean, this deck's not bad. I think one Faithless Looting would have improved the deck. Like, the deck could be a little bit more on the combo side. But I don't think uh, I don't think this deck's bad at all. And Piles by Color. Well, let's just see. I, yeah, I'm basically Green, Black, Splash, Sneak, and Breach. And already. Yeah. I have one, two, three, four red sources. So if I can get up to seven, I'd be I'd love it. I think I can because I if I put four black sources in, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, plenty, and then four green sources, that's four, five, six, seven. Uh, I guess I need one more green source because I have fertile ground, oath of druid, sylvan, and that means I just have to cut a red source. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll put some blue and white in case I side those in, but I don't really think that's going to happen. Um, oh, I've got some cards in here that I'm just not going to play, so I'm just going to... don't really feel like getting them yet. All right. Yeah, just, I mean, this deck's totally fine. Um, let's see. We've got how many duels? One, two... Oh, having a creature land is also pretty nice. And then Underground Sea is worse against Wasteland, but the outs of casting Atroxa, I think, outweigh that. So, all right, Let, let's get to it. This deck, this deck looks solid. Alrighty, battle against Tom Martell around one here. And yeah, this is a solid hand. It's not amazing, but getting to go turn two Mindstone, turn three Duretti is totally fine. I also have a Maelstrom Pulsar at the ready. All right, Swamp was a bad draw. Let's do less of that. At least Mindstone can cycle. And next turn, probably Forest Duretti here. Let's see what Tom is up to. Hopefully not Academy stuff. Talisman. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, I think I'm just going to play Duretti and plus one it. I could sack the Mind Stone to kill the Talisman. The reason I don't want to do that is I have a Maelstrom Pulse in hand. So if Tom plays 
another threat this turn, I can pulse it. So I don't really care if he gets to use the Talisman mana. Though if he plays a spell, that's a little less good. And I really don't want to sack the Mind Stone because I've only drawn land in Grim Monolith so far. So I need to use the Mind Stone to find some action. Especially since this deck is a sneak deck, which means having no sneak or breach in hand plus no big creature in hand, I'm multiple draw steps away from assembling something. So I think... Uh, it makes more sense to give Tom access to Talisman for one turn. Next turn, Doretti is coming after it, though. I'm going to sack the Construct to kill the Talisman. And maybe I get to pull something on the way here. We'll see. Pentad Prism for two. Okay. And then pass. All right. Well, I guess I'll kill the Pentad Prism or try to. Um, let's cast Grim Monolith. The reason I'm casting Grim Monolith first is the way Duretti works. Uh, I'm going to blow up the Prism. I think that's more of a threat. If he, if Tom had like a kill spell for my Construct, I'd rather sack the Monolith than something else. Okay, he's going to get to use the Pentad Prism. Well, I'm not going to sack an Artifact now. I'm just going to pass the turn. Well, pass to second main. He's going to use the Mana. And play something. Crop rotation. Oh man, crop rotate for Academy. Okay. That's interesting. Well, that is going to lead to a slightly different play for me. I am going to cast Palantir. But... Mana Drain. All right. Well, I guess I played the Palantir first because I was worried about... Uh, Mana leak, but of course, mana draining the Palantir is kind of annoying. Pulsing that kills two mana, so hopefully this doesn't give Tom mana to do something too wild. And next turn, I will still go after the Pentad Prism here. Okay. Five mana, or maybe four, because I don't know how much of the mana drain mana he's actually going to use. Might Stone and Weak Stone draw two cards. All right, I'm probably just going to start Duretting next turn. Let's see what he's got for five mana here. Golos. Okie dokie. Oh, man. All right. This is not going great. Need to draw some action here. Oath of Druids is pretty good. Let's see. Let's crack Mindstone to draw a card here. Okay, I think I'm going to lose Duretti. I'm going to Might Stone and Weak Stone, sack the Construct, and I'm going to let Tom attack Duretti because I'm playing Oath of Druids here. Basically, if I sacked the Grim Monolith to kill the Might Stone and Weak Stone, I would have a creature, Tom would have a creature, he just wouldn't attack with Golo, so I wouldn't get to Oath. So I do have to kind of lose Duretti to have this happen, but that's okay. If Tom can deal with the Oath, I don't love my spot. So we'll have to see how this goes. But if I get to Oath up an Atroxa, then obviously that is pretty awesome. So see if we can get there. And he's got Urza Saga. So he's going to be able to make some constructs. Three mana. Chrome Host Seed Shark. All right, looks like I'm getting to Oath and Preordain. Okay. I mean, he's getting to do a lot of stuff, but Oath of Druids is a one... This is my, the best one card I could have drawn, actually. Like, it's a one-card kind of combo mechanism. The card I want to hit most is Atroxa. Emrakul's okay. Ashen Rider, I'm not as thrilled about. And... Same with World Spine Worm, I suppose. Cryptic Command, oh, where you are bouncing the Oath. Okay. Well, I guess we'll draw and... Do this again, huh? And land, go. Stop on upkeep. Because what I might actually end up doing is, uh, in response to Oath, vamping for Atroxa here. Okay, the good thing about him using the Cryptic is he wasn't able to make a Construct token last turn, because I would take a lot more damage this turn. So currently, he's going to get a one drop. He's going to get Candelabra. Well, it's got approximately 50 mana now. Like, let's see. Without playing a spell, 6, 11, 13 mana. Pretty good. 
We'll see what happens. I mean, if well, I guess we're not getting upheavaled. We're getting parallax waved. Okay. Yeah, that's not great for me. Because you can parallax wave whatever I oath up here. And Academy, sure. So it means Emrakul is certainly not good. I, what I could do is I could vamp. Hmm. I could vamp for Ashen Rider, and then Ashen Rider comes in and eats the parallax wave. Um, but that doesn't seem that doesn't seem like it's going to get me out of this situation because I'm taking a bunch of damage here. I'm taking how much? Seven ten. Oh, what is this? Uh, Knight of the Reliquary is our last card. All right. What I might do is I'm going to untap Monolith end of turn, and then. I think I vamp for Atroxa in response to the Oath Trigger. And then I uh, hope I get to use that. Because I could vamp for Ashen Rider. I'm at 10, kill the Parallax Wave, then just die. So I'm going to get Atroxa. And I hope the Atroxa ends up finding me what I need to win this game, which includes sneak or breaching in Ashen Rider. Um, doesn't look like it does, but we'll see. So I need Planeswalker, Instant Creature, Land, so Enchantment. So definitely Taiga, this, Liliana, World Spine Worm. And I guess I take Pile on. And then I have an upkeep stop. And then on upkeep, pile on the construct. I guess he'll parallax wave it out probably, but might as well try to surveil here. If I draw exactly Ashen Rider, maybe I, I get out of it. I don't, because now I just get waved and attacked. All right, well. Tom's deck looks very good. It's unfortunate. A rare good Martell deck. <laughs> uh, I don't really think I even want to side in really anything. I certainly don't want Garrick Relentless. Mana Drain Academy, Candelabra, all that stuff, huh? Yeah, I mean, I just got to hope I don't get Academied, but he's got Academy and Crop Rotation. And Golos and Knight of the Reliquaries. He's got a lot of academies. I, I don't have a Wasteland. Would, that would be a nice one to have here. And don't really want Ulamog. I mean, Parallax Wave is just a beating out, out of an academy deck that's already doing busted academy things. If he had one or the other, like I would have beaten that whole board without Parallax Wave. And because an Atroxa means this like attacking doesn't do that much, especially since it was going to be an Atroxa plus a World Spine Worm. Like I could have snuck in World Spine Worm, attacked, and made a bunch of tokens. And I could have beaten Wave without pressure, but of course, pressure plus Wave, that's the, the combo. All right, well, this hand is very good. I could vamp here on turn one. I don't even know what I would vamp for. I guess I could vamp for like Grim Monolith to try to set up Undermountain Adventure a turn earlier, but that seems kind of weak. What I think I'm going to do is just pass, play turn two Sylvan, and uh, go from there. I mean, playing a Oath on turn two is the sort of play, like if I didn't have Sylvan, I don't even think I'd play Oath, because playing Oath when they have no creatures in play just Give them full control and uh, over whether you get to oath and not you know kind of you don't get to and the full knowledge of that you have an oath in play it'll just change their plays dramatically. Okay, I was hoping to find Grim. Mm. Let's see, put on top. Yeah, I'll pay for life to keep fertile ground. That's fine. Man, he's got mana leak also. Oh, all right. Tom's deck is very good. 
On the other hand, though, if he passes with Saga up, I can play Oath on my turn. So let's see, what do I do in this turn? Put on top, put on top is fine. Land, fertile ground, my forest. Play Oath. And if you've got mana drain, you got to use it. But then he can't use the Saga. And if he doesn't have a way to answer Oath, using Saga end of turn is actually a lot dicier. So this is at least a pretty decent play. And then I get to vamp to shuffle away my two lands if I want, depending on what he does. All right, so he's just going to make a Saga token. Let's hope he doesn't have an answer to Oath here. He's not making a Saga token, right? If he's making a Saga token, I feel very good about the situation because that, I mean, we'll see, but that kind of implies that I'm just going to get to Oath in the face of a couple of Sagas. All right, Oath might just get him. Okay. No, does he have a Mox and an Academy to, to Cryptic my Oath? <laughs> oh, Leyline Binding. Okay. Um, yeah, wow. Let's see. I got a 13. I guess I'm going to 11 here because I'm going to vamp. Mm -hmm. So if I get pulse, I can kill the, the ley line binding and get the oath back. Then I'm just taking a bunch of damage off of those those idiots. I, I'm right now taking six, but it could be a lot worse. Yeah, if you have Saga into Academy, that is good. And, and another Oath answer. I could pulse and kill the two tokens. Honestly, that, that's probably better. And then we'll see what happens otherwise. Okay. Let's see. Thought sees you. Kaito Titania. Um, I guess Titan there's also Pentad Prism. Titania gets back Urza Saga, which is pretty annoying. I think I think I take the Titania and I pulse the tokens. I guess I could, I guess there's an argument maybe to taking the Pentad Prism, but it feels risky to do that. I don't know. Maybe I just, because he goes Island. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's better to take Prism. He does get to play Kaito this turn, but oh, and he drew Candelabra. All right, well, I'm glad I didn't take the Prism because otherwise the Candelabra let him just play the Titania here. All right, so he's got Island Kaito in hand is playing a Kaito here. Sure, you can untap your land first. Mm -hmm. Next turn, I'm going to play Undermount Adventure and go from there. Yep. And what do you make? card here probably just drawing a card is my guess I really don't want him to make a creature damn because of uh the I don't really want him to take back the initiative which he's going to get a chance to do here I guess I am at five so it does kind of make sense Liliana of the Veil so if I play Undermount Adventure next turn he goes plus one Kaito attack and take the initiative so I think I'm just going to put these on top. Cast Liliana. I've been like a mana short this whole time because if I was uh, one more mana, I could have like played adventure, gotten the land, played it, played the things. But unfortunately, we were not at that position. All right, so draws a card. Says Island and two unknowns. Hoping for a one turn break from stuff. Don't know how realistic that is. Knight of the Reliquary. 
Okay. Draw. <laughs> Put those back. All right. Well, I guess I'll just play Under Mountain Adventure. And um, now I guess I'm actually just dead. I can plus one it, but the knight just attacks me for four. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I could have plus one Liliana and Shallow Grave the Underman Adventure during combat. That's what I needed to do, but I was pretty dead here. All right, well, that was a tough match, and uh, Tom's deck looks really good, so hopefully better next time. Alrighty, time for round two. I'm playing against a red black Luris deck, Juju Bean. Always always with that Luris. He does love Luris. He takes it very highly and can't fault him. It's a good card. Um Do I like this? Yeah, I like this well enough. I'm on the play here. He's mulling. Probably gonna go Badlands into Inquisition on turn one. There's no real reason to play a tap land here, I don't think. And if I can snipe like a Mox or something, that's pretty huge. Oh, he didn't. Well, never mind. For some reason, I thought he had. All right. And then uh, get to play Escape to the Wild soon. Well, soon. <laughs> uh, hmm. I don't care too much about the removal spells. I kind of think I want to take the Voldaren Epicure. Yeah. It's a little weak, but it's the only thing that's pressuring me, or that could pressure me, so seems fine. It's got a Luris hanging out in the Luris zone. Turn one, Ketria Trium. All right, would like to draw a Sneak or a Breach. I would win pretty easily if I did, in my opinion. Oh, Palantir was actually a really nice draw. Let's see if I can Palantir into an Emrakul. <laughs> uh, well, I'll put these both on the bottom. Take 15. <laughs> that was. I put them both on the bottom, too. <laughs> oh, he said, yep. I said, skill game. All right, he's got Luris in hand. Uh, pass. Oh, I should have attacked with Lava Claw. What am I doing? I'm just like too enchanted by the Emrakul. Put those both on the bottom. He can't. He, he's got to let me draw the card. <laughs> uh, let's see. Next turn, he is going to get to play Luris plus Voldar and Epicure. And I am going to draw a card and then cast Escape to the Wilds. Oh, Juju Bean, you can't be serious. He just took it. He goes to one. Okay. I guess it kind of worked out that I didn't attack because he wouldn't have taken it, and I would have drawn those two, which is a lot worse, I feel like. All right, here, in comes Luris. In comes Voldar and Epicure. Draw. Oh, and then I drew Sneak. <laughs> sneak. Sneak in. World Spine Worm. And uh, attack. Well... Chunks of 15, huh? <laughs> uh, do I want Graveyard Trespasser? I kind of do. Like, yeah, it's bad with Oath, and I'm probably going to get whammied by it. But Graveyard Trespasser against Luris is pretty decent because he sets up a Luris thing, and then I get to go Trespasser attack or play it, eat your thing. Other thing to think about is he does have Kroxa in the deck, so that's like another reason that the Trespasser could be good. Oh, what would I take out then? I maybe take out Escape to the Wilds because it's a little slow. All right. I think that this is reasonable. Let's see how this plays out. On the draw here. Right. Uh, yeah, this hand's totally fine. Turn 1 Inquisition, turn 2 Sylvan is a pretty nice start. Concealing Curtains is a little annoying. Oh. Well, I'm going to take Dothy Voidwalker for sure. You can play Chain Lightning. This turn, he's probably just going to play nothing. The cool thing is, 
I get to dr drop Sylvan, unless he drawn Mox. Mox would be a disaster. But I get to drop Sylvan before that thing flips. And then when Sylvan's in play, flipping curtains and making me discard Pylon is just not that big of an issue. But if he does draw Mox, then that's a possibility. I mean, he is thinking about something. And so that means he's got a choice between plays. And I don't think Mountain Chain Lightning you is like a legit play. So my guess is, yeah. All right, Forest. So I've drawn two lands so far, which is not ideal. Slam Sylvan here. Still pretty likely he's going to want to flip the Concealing Curtain. It's just hard to imagine that that, was, that wouldn't be the play. Boom, boom, boom. Do you even take the pile on is kind of the question. I, I don't even know. I mean, it's probably worth it. Another land? Come on. All right, and another land. Can I Sylvan into two more lands? No. I'm putting this on top. This is so bad. I kind of need to pay four life just to just to see new cards here. I'm pretty dead though. I mean, drawing five land in a row or whatever is going to do that, right? Like, I I just I'm getting hit down to ten, and then he goes Luris has chain lightning in hand still. Dothy Voidwalker ready to play. I mean, he gets to put Luris in hand, doesn't get to put it into play. I'm not just dead, but like, just not, not that close to doing something, I guess, is the problem. Imperial Seal. Plus Luris. Okay. Or presumably put Luris into hand. Mountain. Oh, Revoker. Going to revoke Sneak, I would imagine, since that's the uh, the most likely one here. And then I am going to take maybe eight next turn. I mean, I guess playing Undermount Adventure stops Revoker from attacking me. All right, he's just going to chain light into the face, sure. All right, yes. Put on top, and I think I put Emrakul on top, and play the Undermountain Adventure. Get a mountain past the turn. I think with World Spine in hand, I'd rather just keep the the Emrakul or keep the Grim Monolith, because then next turn I can cast something big, and then Char. All right. Yeah, I mean, I died on turn five. I guess I could have not Sylvaned as aggressively, but I don't think that... And that didn't seem like the, the play to me. All right, all right, all right. On the play now, let's see if uh, we can... Maybe just play a turn two Oath. Honestly, Oath of Druids looks really good against him. Like, he does have burn. Char plus Chain Lightning plus Arc Trail, plus who knows what else. But Oath, if I land an early Oath, it's going to be pretty hard for him to mount an offense. And also I might be able to just, you know, he plays a Voldar and Epicure and I play an Oath that's pretty good. The last time I played against Jujubean, he killed his own creature and then burned me out. So hopefully that doesn't happen. All right, well, I'm going to keep this hand. I, I can't mulligan a sneak plus removal hand. It doesn't really make sense. This is a, a hand where I wouldn't mind if you drew Concealing Curtains. All right, Epicure's fine. A ramp card would have been really nice there. Let's pass. Mm, what am I hoping to draw here? I mean, I guess at some point I need to draw a big creature. I kind of want him to play a, a creature that's good to dismember. Again, Concealing Curtains would be like the ideal because that would also waste his turn three. Grim Monolith would also be a fantastic draw because I'd be able to play turn two Monolith or turn three Monolith plus Sneak. Like if I get Sneak in play, it's pretty good. He does have Frexian Revoker. So I don't want to think that a Sneak in play is like a guaranteed dub. Well, obviously I have to draw a creature too. Oh, I like this. We're discarding to the Blood Token. Did he keep a one-lander or something? So you don't have a mox in hand, because you would have used the mox to do that. 
I would imagine he's got a land still, but who knows? I mean, if he doesn't have a land, it's not a whole lot of plays you can make here. But could also have like a land heavy hand. But even then, no, then you wouldn't sack the Crooks. I don't know. Oh, Sylvan Library is a very good draw here. Because I'm not really under any pressure, and Sylvan can help me find some sneak value. And I have two removal spells and a sneak in hand. Okay, Mox Diamond, sure. Turok. Um, so, I could dismember Turok in response. But that's a 50-50 sneak goes down. I think that's fine. I really don't want... Turok is a lot of pressure. All right. Yeah, I discarded the sneak. Didn't love it. I, I know I had pile on, but I don't know. Felt like with Sylvan Library out, keeping sneak was pretty good. Um, I'm just going to put these both on top, play a land and pass, and then... Cast Pylon to kill something and Surveil too. I don't really want to kill Voldar and Epicure, so I'm probably not going to do that. The other thing I could do with Sylvan is if I can find a creature with Shallow Grave in hand, if I can find a creature, I can pile on the creature. It's kind of interesting. Oh, this is going to work out pretty well, I think. Because now I pile on that, mill two. Graveyard, graveyard. All right. Let's see if we can find something here. Am I going to get Chain Lightning too? Uh, yeah, he's going to Chain Lightning me. He's going to try to fill the graveyard for Kruxa. Need to find something here. I mean, I have Sylvan, but so far it's kind of come up empty. Oh, we're Imperial Ceiling. That's a lot worse for me. Okay, so you know what actually would be awesome in a play that I think could be really good? If I can find Ashen Rider or a, hopefully Atroxa with this Sylvan and just keep it in hand, at some point he's going to bring back Kroxa and I could discard the Atroxa and then Shallow Grave it. That would be, that would be sick. Let, let's see if we can, if we can get there. If Juju Bean has a fetch land, that'll work here for Crooks next turn because you're about to have four cards in your graveyard. Also, keeping the sneak so far wouldn't have done a whole lot because <laughs> uh, I haven't had any creatures. And let's say I had kept the sneak and discarded the dismember, I would have gotten concealing curtains anyway. This is awful. Uh, Twelve. Really wanted to find something. All right, I guess. Do this. My top card's a forest. Eh, I'm just going to sack it and play the forest, I guess. That's fine. And then I'm just going to look for a through the breach next turn here. Would have been really nice to. Yeah, I guess. I guess now I can just discard Emrakul. Actually, I don't know my top card, so I don't want to shuffle. No, I'm just going to discard Shallow Grave. See, if I had found Atroxa or Ashen Rider, I just had the, I had the setup. What a shame. Yeah, I'm going to lose this. I don't really think there's a good way out here. Draw. I mean, can play to ready and make a token. It's really not going to do anything. Discard Emrakul, sure. I mean, I guess I'll... I don't die. I guess I'll go for it. But really can't imagine it will work. What a beating to find. I, it was a 50-50 once I drew a creature. Obviously, the drawing a creature is already not that likely. But half my creatures will let me win the game with Shallow Grave versus Kroxa. The other half wouldn't. And now we're 0-2. Yikes, let's see if we can get one in round three. All right, time for round three. I got to get one here. Can't let the team down completely. Playing against 
kind of like four color mid range, like blue, green, red, white, like you know, Othari, Haywire Might, Flash, Hole Breacher, Flash and Triplicate Titan, Hole Breacher, some other stuff. I'm definitely going to keep this hand. And uh, Skull Clamp, too, indeed. Land. Oh, there's Sneak. Okay, so. I could vamp this turn, but I don't think I want to. I think I just want to go Taiga Sneak and the re or Taiga Grim rather. The reason is, had I drawn either a red source or a creature, I could have gone Sneak plus Sneak next turn. But because I didn't, I don't think I'm going to upkeep vamp. I'm just going to draw and land. And I think I just play Sneak here and pass, and hope I don't get Lorand. If I do, that sucks. I think there's gonna be a hole breacher, yeah. That's why I, I, I wanted to do this, because I think Dom is gonna cast a draw seven in response, maybe. Or cast a draw seven, and in response I'll... Mm, no, I'm gonna dismember the hole breacher in response here. And... Unfortunately, I'm just not going to vamp here. I don't think it really makes sense to vamp, because there's nothing I can really vamp for that does anything. And it even trigger Ledger Shredder. Let's just take it. Let's just draw. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll just play Palantir. I don't really have a different play. Let's see. I don't really want Forest. I guess I'll put World Spine on top. And happy either way here. Okay, I've got something to sneak in maybe. Mm -hmm. Talisman, sure. And then we're gonna make play Arden Vale Fealty, make a 2-2 Ledger Shredder. It's bigger. I'm probably gonna kill the Ledger Shredder this turn. We're just, we're just gonna slow things down, just like Teferi says. At some point I would like to draw a land. Actually, killing Ledger Shredder is just horrible. Um, really wanted to just cast Sneak this turn. Taking five, I'm at ten. And it's something he could maybe cast Virtue. I think I'm just going to kill the Knight token. Horrible, but I don't know. There's not really much else I can do here, I don't think. Bottom. Bottom. I don't really... I. Don't really want to swamp either. All right, mountains at least fine. Snapcaster is bad for me because now it's like attack you down to five and then skull clamp away the snapcaster. Yeah. Oh, this is actually something. Wait. Oh, we're just casting the virtue. Sure. Pumping both those, and now I'm dead. Um, can I do anything? Play Underground Adventure, it just gets bounced and I die. Yeah, that didn't feel like I was, I don't know. It, I guess get, the, getting my sneak bounced after I tapped Grim, not drawing a land after, and then just dying with a bunch of cards in my hand. I guess that's what happened. All right. This deck's going to need a little help here. I, I Things just have really not worked out well. I mean, the, look, I'm playing the kind of deck that is inconsistent. Um, look, this hand has no black mana. Guess I keep this. Put a forest back and pass. Some, you know, I'm I'm hoping to draw A plus B with Vamp and Sylvan, and like I guess escape to the wilds to a degree as ways to hold it together. I'm gonna keep the proving ground in hand and just cycle it. Um, so yeah, some amount, some amount of the time this deck is gonna run into games where it just doesn't doesn't draw or does something like this where it draws sneak and breach and, and watch I'm just like not going to draw any creatures or something but that's kind of what you sign up for this sort of deal all right well Minsk and Boo I guess I can kill the Minsk and Boo and then take four and then take four and with sneak and breach in hand if I draw a creature then you know that's that's that'd be pretty good if I don't draw a creature, I'm going to lose. 
relatively fast too, because I'm going to take four this turn, and then presumably uh, Dom's going to play another creature here. Tithe Taker, yeah, that's not the end of the world, but obviously it leaves up Hole Breacher. I'm going to play the Sneak. If he's got a counter spell, he'd counter it. Well, I have nothing to sneak into play, and it's going to go end of turn Hole Breacher. Oh, Cycle Triumph, that's less bad. Attack me down to six. Mm. What do we cast in here? Othari, attack me down to one. Oh, Prismatic Ending, sure. Doesn't actually matter that much because I don't have a creature to go with it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take six down to six and I'm ready to draw land. All right, I guess I'll pass and activate Lava Claw. Buys me one more turn. Ready to draw a vamp. It's actually cost four to activate because of the Tithe Taker, <laughs> which also means I can't make it big enough to kill the Minskin Boo, so I guess I'll just block the Tithe Taker. I'm at two now. Clamp the token and Recruiter of the Guard. So you can get a whole Reacher here. I don't even know what does a creature do here. It doesn't do much. All right, Inquisition you. Play Hole Breacher in response. Takes turn scolding, cast through the breach, and concede. All right, well, that was a walloping. Just lost every match, but at no point did I do... I sneak one out of six games or whatever, seven games. I think I won one against JJ, so... Out of seven games, I, I put one creature into play with Sneak and zero creatures into play with Breach, and that's, this deck's not going to win if that's what's happening. So that'll do it. 3 let my team down. I don't like it, but it happens. And uh, I guess we'll have to recoup, regroup, and draft again tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Can't all be winners. This one certainly wasn't. But tomorrow's a new day, a new draft, and uh, we'll be back then with hopefully a more successful outing. <laughs> I'll see you then. <laughs>